the game where things really started to go sideways with the Fizz top. We've seen the, I guess, the Rek'Sai side top of the only other comparable pick. Keep it coming, EDG. Yeah, LPL has been pretty good so far in its first week. We'll see what EDG or King might be able to do here. King on the blue side, of course, for this one. LeBlanc and Azir, their first two bans. Rek'Sai, Kalista going to join as well. So just strong champions being banned across the board see where the picks and bans go. We don't know too much about Bami. I know he's a strong LeBlanc player, so it's an understandable ban. Alistair actually hits the pick and bans. Interesting to see if this is still the same story in a couple of weeks' time, but Alistair priority still very high. Yep, high certainly on this patch. Gragas gets insta-locked there by King as he was going to have a run at that champion. Hecarim, the last ban there for EDG, will deny it from both Cola and Amazing J. And let's just sit back and see where EDG want to pick up here. Yeah, I mean, the Fizz in the first rotation was surprising, but we, we kind of expected that even though Pawn loved the Fizz, it would probably be going somewhere other than mid. They're looking over Maokai, and I saw the grimace on your face. You don't want to see any Maokai shenanigans. It's probably going to be Maokai. I mean, nobody wants to see Amazing J play Maokai, but that's what we've got here. Koro's on the bench, bring in the Amazing J Maokai, and Death's going to go back to Sivir as well. Remember, it could always be support Maokai. It's true. That's true. We haven't seen oh, the return of legendary support Maokai. Haven't seen it since Low left the OMG roster, but who knows? EDG certainly do do some s strange things sometimes. Coach Aaron has a lot of kooky strats cooked up, but Morgana Fizz already locked in for King. Korn's going to go back to Comfort. Speaking of Comfort, Annie available. We're surprised to see it not locked in in the first game. Annie against Morgana smells like a matter that's not that optimal, but of course, you ever bait out that black shield, the same burst potential comes through. Siva Annie is such a strong duo. The nerfs haven't come through on this patch. Clear Love Special could be in the works here. Evelyn is available, and it's locked yep, in. Yep, Evelyn hit for Clear Love once again. His Game 5 winning champion from MSI, and a, a love of his for so long here. And Mako going to go back to comfort for himself as well. Back on the Annie. And look, four picks have only been locked in, but let me tell you, there's one theme that comes together that really meshes this team together. If it had a title, it would be called Everyone Get In Here. <laughs> yes, lots of engage there for EDG. We talked about Siva being the uh, the, the go button. energy, yeah, the go button, the ignition energy for moving all these big tanks and engage tools in. Exactly the same thing here as we look at King. We've got the Vayne locked in actually Ooh. for Al, and they're considering a Nah into the Malco matchup as well. That'll be a fine top lane matchup, but Vayne had not that much success here, and that's going to be Nah as well. But King, that is a very fragile looking lineup. It's a daring Vayne pick again, a no wave clear double assassin. I mean, Vayne's not a true assassin, but single target, high damage threat. Fizz doesn't offer much. Uh, of that sort of threat either in terms of wave clear. EDG, they could go for a skill matchup or they could just pick Lulu to have all the wave crew in the world. That's not porn. No, that isn't porn, but Mako going to have a bit of fun with the fans. I think Bambi's going to pick something that help, you know, gets in there. Lulu, bit surprising to me, but I guess it does make sense with the rest of the comp. Julian? Pastry time car. Yes. Everyone is going to get yes, in there. Yes, that is exactly what will happen as Bami picks up Lulu for his last pick here. I guess my biggest concern for EDG, just looking at a glance at the lineups, is where's the damage coming from? It's not a high damage lineup, but they've got wave clear. They've got pick potential. They're strong in the mid game. This is once again going to be similar to the previous game where they didn't pick themselves into winning the mid game strategy. They've done that here. So this is going to be all about controlling the waves, going for turret dives, and more importantly, picking up the dragons and getting that win condition of just the five and look, EDG is still a team that can take this sort of lineup and still, you know, have the objective control, get their snowball going, win with these sort of champions. But it's not the same lineup as game one. I guess we expect change here moving through as start things in the top. It's Nar versus Maokai. Very, very standard top lane matchup. Disappointment there, but clear love bringing off the MSI winning Evelyn pick. Last pick Evelyn. Not so much last pick Evelyn here against Grog. It's not quite the Nunu matchup, but it's still Evelyn. Yeah, we've got Fizz versus Lulu there. Korn's Comfort versus a solid champion there for Bami. Out on the Vayne versus is Def Siva. Be careful here, Al. I know the 1v1's not too bad, but Def, he will punish you, especially with Mako on the Annie versus the Morgana. But it's a potential star-making performance here. Picking the vein into Def is already going to be a very confidence-inducing thing. It's always going to be a difficult matchup, Vayne versus any of the traditional AD carries. It's a skill matchup against Siva. It's a skill matchup against the best AD carry in the world. Bring it on, says Al, and it'll be exciting to see whether he can match Def. Yeah, just picked it in there. We'll see what it can get done, but Def Already pretty aggressive in the 2v2. We'll see if we can do it again because we're about to get into the evening's last game.
And welcome onto the roof for our final game of the evening. Still one day of this week left of the LPL, of course, tomorrow. But EDG versus King Fun. Edward Gaming up a game after a blisteringly fast first game here in Clearlove. Over on the fancy new Thiefy Evelyn. Going to be seeing what he can get done. And again, favorite champions across the board for a lot of the players actually here. And King will see if they can even up against a strong looking EDG despite some substitutions. I was spying onto the rune page that Clear Love was running. Don't see the official rune page, but I can see 32 AP and 67 AD. So he's running the very heavy AD AP rune page. Flat stats just to increase the jungle clear. After the extra 10... Uh, flat damage onto hate spikes at level one. Since, of course, the MSI patch, Jungle Evelyn's already got a faster clear. When you add those flat stats, she can be blisteringly fast. Only the removal of Spirit Stone has truly trivialized Evelyn as a jungler, because although she has very weak base stats, Spirit Stone kind of made it that, so that her very high damage output gave her sustainability. Now she's going to fall low, but she's going to power farm the jungle. And that's sort of what you have to do in the early stages anyway, because I think you described her yesterday as a brittle jungler when Kikau played her. You die quickly, but if you clear them quickly, hopefully you don't die quite as fast. And the extra 10 damage and the flat runes will help in that particular regard. It has already skilled Q. Some people speculate that skilling E first, just because you get, if, if you're on the other side, if you start the Krugs, then of course you get the stun so often with the extra attack speed. Given that you're starting the Grunt, probably makes sense to start Q. Going to fall low, as clear lovers want to do on the Evelyn, but we'll power farm. Yeah, just going to Q through these creeps as fast as he can. Huey... Going to try a similar thing here on the Gregor, starting Krugs with a bit of help from his bottom lane and moving into his red. So both junglers will start and end on the same side of the jungle here. And 2v2 lands once again. Death to Mako. They love going in on level 1 and Mako is already starting to try and, and punish. That's the funny thing. It's the level 2 engaged last time. We see level 1 already the damage starts. Level 1 engages have happened before in EDG games. We'll famously remember Death playing Twitch and basically both sides being completely chunked out before minions even broke. Level 2 will be hitting the next minion, and we'll see if the all-in is on. I mean, this is basically what EDG did in the last game here, and it's so smart. Get an advantage level 1, force them off, and just make sure you reach level 2 first. Every dueling wants to win there as Baimi. Gonna get a Grest on here. Huey gonna come through. Good flash there to dodge the slow, and a bit of Glitter Lance damage coming through as well. But a knock-up is gonna come in from the Body Slam, and Baimi already feeling some early pressure. He's taken the aggressive Ignite Summon as well. Try and have kill pressure onto this Fizz. So it doesn't have a... Uh, barrier, for example, to be defensive, flashes down, gonna have to watch his positioning in lane with lots of gank pressure from Gragas. Unfortunately for EDG, bottom lane, just gonna have to be a bit of extra pressure, just the edge of the boomerang blade there for hours. He does tumble out of the first bit Ricochet of damage. Too. Yeah, I mean, there's some damage coming through here, but EDG probably not gonna tower dive at level two. Yeah, Deft actually takes a turret hit because another ricochet bounces twice, then hits Al. He's so, so low in lane. No sustain going to come through from Morgana. Maybe have to has to use the heal preemptively for a bit of sustain. Because if he tries to use it reactively, there is 100% going to be Ignite riding on his yeah, back. Yeah, Deft has got that killer instinct now with that flash. And every, all the summoner spells up mean that you don't, don't want to make any mistakes because you misuse one of those spells. And somebody's going to die on the bottom side. Both junglers on the top side mean there are no dives or ganks coming through. It's actually a very smart ward just because of the reduced vision of Trinket wards. You have to be a bit more creative with their placement. They know that Huey is in that brush. To see if any action spawns in the mid. There's, the forward there. There's the first blood for Defter. Mako pulls the trigger instantly. Huey gonna die as well as Baimi gets the kill. Clearlove's around. Quan will get the kill onto Baimi, but Clearlove gonna try and chase in. Urchin Strike gonna keep him alive, but Clearlove, good counter gank, gets the 1v1 trade. Two for one is the trade, and that's why I say use the heal proactively. Usually it feels bad to sustain yourself with summon a heal. But you have to do it when Flash, Ignite, and a stun is available on a support ante. You take the case, you went for the vein against Siva, you take the consequences. Yeah, and you can see why Mako's Annie is so feared and revered by so many players here in the LPL, especially combined with Deft. If they find a single second to kill you, they will do it. And it's just not being respected. Remember, it was banned, I believe, nine games in a row between World Elite uh, Invictus Gaming and some of the uh, tail end games of the LPL Spring Split. This is something to be feared. Maybe on 5.9 you can argue that some of the auto attacks won't be there, so you won't be as chipped down, the all in won't be as strong. But I have a bet. I'm going to be a betting man and say the Maker will still find a way to make any work. I mean, you know what? All of the spells still in there. You still got the Great Engage, so I think so as well as Huey does spot the Trinket Ward there. The Baby just placed down, but a good Pink Ward going to keep him relatively safe as Corn returns with a fairly even CS score in the mid lane.
I mean, 22 to 27 with Flash being down early just shows the strength of Lulu's wave clear. Has had to respect this Gragas, and Huey's been pitching a tent in the mid lane, but no massive kill pressure being called. There's a one for one trade. Corn has double buffs, so Bami just has to play passively. Good bit of poke. We're going to try and wave clear it back out as well. Actually, tags him with the end of a good land. Sarah's death comes in and stops Al from freezing this no wave. No free any longer. orders. Yeah, no, no free minions either here as death going in. They're actually trading a little unfavorably there with the level two silver bolts, but without Mako here, especially with Morgana coming back, a bit trickier for him to go all in like that. And he's going to have re-enter lane. No flash and ignite available, but will be soon. They're going in aggressively. Yeah, Mako really wants a good binding from Sync Dream to keep him back there, but Mako again, he's never afraid to go in. Doesn't even have his flash, but he is walking towards you aggressively, and look at that damage. Goes in so far just for uh -oh. poke. But there's the ignite down as well. Mako, uh -oh. maybe a bit too far. There's the first kill for Ow, and that was a mistake. That was just lazy play from Mako He's being overly aggressive to a fault and paid for it. Corn is trying to go in aggressively, but he's being baited. Clear Love's level six, you easier as well, but so is Clear Love. Good fish from Corn's gonna give the kill. Now it's 1v2 for Clear Love. Gonna try and get the damage done with Evelyn, but doesn't have enough and a beautiful counter gank by Huey. The Agony's Embrace was available, but crucially the wild growth was not from Lulu's. They get the kill and get out. Well played, King. EDG, they're playing a bit too cute, and finally King have found a way to punish them. Yeah, Huey on the Greg is getting a lot of early work done here, and the misstep in the bottom side means that Deft it's going to go in 1v2, has that spell shield ready, but doesn't quite fancy it at this point. Doesn't have very much mana left here, so has to be a bit careful. Probably baiting Sync Dream just for a bit of extra mana, but Al, he'll play it safe here. He knows he already got an advantage, doesn't want to throw it away. So he's finally got a window back into this lane. He never got one in game one. He was basically gifted one for some poor play from Mako. He's just going to be smartly back, work towards his bilge water cutlass, you'd have to imagine. Not a lot of power there, so maybe just a couple of long swords, but no, just a vampiric scepter. Definitely not a big buy like the pickaxe that Siv has already picked up. Bami going to keep wave clearing there as well. Actually has an early null magic mantle, so wants to shake off some of the early fizz damage. Kong with a Shane is going to start doing respectable burst in the lane there as well. And you can see our Got to go back get a Vampire Acceptor. That's a nice little pickup. But Double Dorans is a bit of an emergency build, and I can't blame him after the first all in. Exactly. It's full sustain build to what? 16% lifesteal if he's not being harassed. But we're not talking about poke trades. It's going to be all in trades. The moment that six is pinged on Mako, you expect the flash tibbers to come through. Baby can obviously naturally itemize a Null Magic Mantle towards what will be in Athens for cooldown reduction in the mid. So just starting with the expensive purchase. Going to work on that mana regen later. Good stuff there. Coming in from Bami is clearly still level 7 now. Actually finished his Ranger's Trailblazer plus the Warrior Enchant. So ready to get aggressive as He's he wants. He's the same level as everyone else, yeah. as the Solar. Oh, clearly gets fish there. Corn, good flash there after it. Clearly going to get cleanly 1v1 trying to clear a pink ward. Very smart stuff from Corn. Yes, yeah, smart play from Corn. This is not a Corn that we saw throughout the LPL spring whatsoever. Much more aggression, controlled aggression as well. Playing a champion like Fizz, much more proactive than some of the Luxes and Orianas of the world that he played both last game and traditionally last season. Good to see. And he, again, he was a classic Fizz player for a long time. They're up there with Whites, the old school Fizz player, back, and back from the old Royal Club, actually, that Cohen used to be on. So he does know the champion. It's one of his favorites, I believe. But I agree. I like seeing him back on the Assassins. It doesn't necessarily fit the comp that well. So there may be a tipping point where the lack of wave clear will be punished. But even getting to feast on the high-leveled clear love, picking up quite a lot of experience and gold from that particular kill credit, Things working out so far for Korn. He'll make her level six, so might just go straight in on the bottom lane. Huey looking for another gank here, but doesn't quite going to find it. Baby with the ulti and the flash up. Going to be a pretty tricky person to kill, but I think he wants to kill Clearlove. Huey doesn't spot him out, of course. Not Rek'Sai, so no tremor sensors available. They scurry past each other like sails in the wind. Is yes. that the term? I, I guessed that one. Went that, for it. Yep, that's fine. Nailed it as Korn is going to look in again. I like this move from King. Is Bami going to be the target actually? Clearlove also there, but now Korn's going to catch him out. Good ulti there. Going to split Clearlove up. Agony's Embrace does work though, and Clearlove gets his revenge. Gets the kill onto Huey. Going to chase Korn down here now as well. That's massive damage with the Warrior, and you can see Evelyn does not muck about. Good ult there from Bami, and he's going to secure himself a kill. Surprising that Korn couldn't find a way out. Looked like he was going to juke towards the blue buff but still punished from Bami. Very nice set of kills. 
And that's what happens when you have the Warrior enchant. Suddenly the damage goes up and skyrockets for Clearlove on the Evelyn. And I feel like it's been a while since people played against Warrior enchant, but Evelyn especially, so uh -oh. much early damage. As Def could be in trouble. Good flash and the ulti use, but Ow! Gonna go in, gets the kill, maybe Mako comes oh. in! Heal at the last second, saves Def, and now Sync Dream gonna get chased down and Def always on point with summoner spells. Death is the god of summoner spells. You never think he has them. You don't think they're up because it's literally as the auto attack is traveling that he pulls off that heal. A lot of players have been guilty of just going for the auto they know will kill that vein or whatever champion Death is on. Or walk backwards and then go, wait, he's still alive. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened there. Mako coming in with a clutch ulti there as well on the Annie to buy them enough time and Death. I thought he was dead there once again, gonna give away a kill, but instead finds himself 2-0 up in the lane. Gets a snowball, Avarice Blade. Didn't have enough gold for the BS, so to Avarice Blade pick out, to Avarice Gold Boots is not the biggest power jump, but it's a bit more fun. I think he's saving gold actually, because he went that was his last pickup, I believe. So again going for the early Avarice Blade. Doesn't quite have enough for the big ticket items, but we'll be there soon enough, especially if that keeps happening. Corn just out of vision of that trinket ward. Hasn't been spotted. Now it's spotted. Yeah, amazing Jay. Good sapling gonna keep him safe, but being a little down here in the matchup, Hex Drinker for the Nar, just a catalyst double. Doran's no amazing day. In. Yeah, needs to be careful. Amazing day. Pops his ulti, does keep them away. Clear love running in as well. Maker's actually navigated to the top side of the map as well. So Amazing Jay, very safe with all his friends joining joining him in the top lane. And that's the thing. You look at these members. We've got Mobility Boots, Annie, Whimsy that Lulu can apply to herself, and Evelyn is already super, super quick to just use that W. Doesn't need to be invisible when she's trying to provide emergency assistance. Lots of speed ups means that EDG can be ever present across the map. Yeah, and Death 1v2 right now was comfy in the 1v1. Now Mako with the Moby Boots ticking away, going to no run tibbers. down to the bottom side. Yep, no ulti, that's important, but does have a stun ready to go. Does want to use it, actually gets on the Sync Dream, forces the Black Shield out. Evelyn's here as well. Sync Dream takes way too much damage. Al gets Agony's Embrace with a beautifully placed ult by Clearlove, who gets the second kill. Clearlove is making this Evelyn work. This was never his ammo. Actually has a sheen for more damage on top of the Warrior. Not going for a random in second or any semblance of tankiness. Trinity Force may be too expensive, maybe too much of a luxury build, but still a possibility. I mean, we'll see, but it's paying off nicely so far with the Warrior Enchant and the Sheen. Gonna mean good dragon damage now as well as EDG will take away their first. And I think Clilla feels offended getting killed for the first time there in the game because he's going back with a vengeance now. Two, one, and three in this game. And often Evelyn is typified as a low damage champion. In the late game, it's potential just because she's a melee champion that needs time to do consistent damage. But if you build enough damage, whether it's Trinity Force or full ability power, which we're probably not going to see given the warrior enchant, you do a lot of mid game damage. You do, and it's nice. She's relatively tanky, does still do sustained damage though, but put that out the window for now. Clearlove's just all early game damage so far. Again, Junglers have not been playing Warrior for the last few weeks, almost two months it feels like. So bringing them back, you mentioned it yesterday, I believe, as Warrior starts to fade back and people have to relearn. You die really quickly to these high damage junglers. You have to relearn warding against Evelyn. You need to relearn Alice's strengths and weaknesses. That's what the meta changes. That's why League of Legends is such a fascinating game is that champions that don't necessarily have target buffs or nerfs just pop up again. You're like, wait, why was this person good? What did we do against them? And it takes times for teams to pick up on that because they've seen so much of the Maokais versus the world. We've all seen Azir versus Zareth for a good three months and far, far too long <laughs> in, in the middle lane. But it's going to be Trinity Force from Clearlove. You asked where the damage is going to come from. This is a carry build from Clearlove, and he's got the whimsy. He's got the wild growth potential in his pocket to just be a melee assassin. Love to see it there from Clearlove. Going carry mode here in this game. Done it before from the jungle, sometimes on the tanks, just with some big players on the ultis like Sejuani, but love that he's really putting the team on his back here. And EDG find themselves about 2,500, 3,000 gold ahead as Korn. Going to get himself a blue buff, but no other major objective to take right now. You were correct. There's the Berserker Grease and the BF Sword now finished for death, so he was saving gold. Has enough for that big, big purchase. Al went for the big plays. He went for the vein, and it looked good at some points. He got that nice kill onto Deft, but one, so a nice kill onto Maker, but one, three, and zero. And now with the item disadvantage, probably just no way back into this lane. Yeah, it was a bit of a full vein moment there for Al, but Def with some very strong use of summoner spells, able to give himself the kill and the advantage. You can see the dual lane for King are constantly leaving here as EDG going to start to rotate down and take some turrets. Clearlove might have caught out someone, does get spotted off by the war there as Sync Dream just envisioned, so at least get the notification. 
and will back away from Clear Love. Clear Love just keeps power farming, gets the, the Krugs through quite happily. Amazing J. Happened quite frequently, is all alone. Gonna get Dove again here. Golti wow. dodged there by Twisted Advance. Amazing Day does get fish, so Ulti ticking away. Still not quite enough as Cola taking up the turrets, and he does go down, but he deserves so much credit for that play. The split timing to Twisted Advance to go anti with Oh, goodbye, Al. Clear Love gets the kill. Even through the Condemn, and Towers are falling left, right, and center, by the way. Amazing Jay buys so much time with that play. It was just such split timing. You're untitled for, what, half a second or less during that Twisted Advance? Made it look easy. He did indeed. And Amazing Jay continuing to make amazing plays here. It's not Fizz this time, but Maokai, 0-1-0. and zero, Not a massive score. 142 CS in a slightly soft matchup for you. Or slightly hard matchup for you, I should say, there with the Nah. Uh, not the best score ever, but he'll take it, even on a role player like Malka. And that's the thing. The unique thing about Amazing Jay is that he can make plays on champions that we've seen so often. How many times do we get excited about a Maokai play? Maybe a very smart strategic player like a Teleport Home Guard Engage. But in terms of lane mechanics, we've seen a couple of times Twisted Advance come up. That's the big outplay mechanic. And he just did it perfect. He did indeed. It's clear love. Going to power down his red buff now as well. Deft is rotating back into the top side. Going to take that last turret. They've got three already with one in the mid and two in the bottom. And it's back to Corky rotations here for EDG, just with Sivir instead. It's the global goal that's the big winner for EDG. It's 6,000 gold, even though the kill score is quite a similar. It's only a dragon in the pocket of EDG, but three turrets to one is the big factor. And Clearlove is huge. He's the highest level in the game joint with Baimi. I mean, Clearlove does get a lot of gold from his team, but this is a whole different take on giving Clearlove a lot of gold. And that's the thing, he has a very high KDA, so it'd be easy to say, okay, he's got a lot of gold because he gets a lot of kills and assists, but it's actually a high amount of percentage gold. It's not the Clearlove of old that used to just pick up lane farm like maybe Diamond many years ago. He actually just gets it uh, stealthily, just picks up a, a couple of creeps here and there, but it adds up. He gets a high percentage of gold, but he knows how to use it, whether it's the Sejuani or a true carry melee carry performance like this. Giving gold to Clear Love, it's always been a good strategy, and EG have found a way to do it without actually holding back their game plan and still playing objective-focused League of Legends. They have, and that, a lot of that for me is Pawn's really just intelligent and creative play, and Baimi playing a similar sort of utility style role again. Not to say that Pawn also can't hard carry games, and that's the scary thing for EDG. It's just threats across the board, and even these new substitutes looking rather threatening as well. You just look back at those games, you wonder, when did Clear Love get this gold? It's literally when Pawn packs up shop level nine and says, I'm going to roam with Cassidy on a Sheen. He roams so much, and that's when Clearlove picks up the farm. But they get things off the roams. They're smart about communication. They're very good at using their targeted CC. A lot of Maokai, no coincidence there. You can make a lot of things happen with the targeted Twisted Advance. And that works for EDG. They get that little bit of an edge on their jungle. They win he wins the duels when he chooses to play aggressively. Always been a smart, clever player. The aggressive side is what's coming out, and it's exciting to see. It is, and we're dragging up in 30 seconds or so. It's a good time to check in on some of these items. We've got a Righteous Glory done for Amazing J, and with the Merc Treads, Trinity Force, already done at 18 and a half minutes. That's better than most 80 carry item timings for that. Well, I mean, Vayne doesn't have a Glade. No, Vayne's in trouble here, as Deft is just going to ultimate down. Can't quite see it. There's Maker with a pink one. Comes in with a stun. Goodbye, Al. And that's an easy dragon for Edward Gaming. Very, very easy. Clear Love is so strong, so strong. You cannot face check whether it's the Annie or the Evelyn. The burst damage will be off the charts. Full damage Clear Love on Evelyn. Much more fun than the build. He was forced to break out at MSI. It is, but just watch this dragon melt as well. Huey going to be in the area, maybe think about a contest, but... Very scary to fight ADG at this stage of the game. And Clearlove gets on top of the dragon and just eats it. Absolutely. We're talking about 500 damage every three seconds when the Trinity Force proc comes off and the Warrior enchant, meaning even more damage on those Triforce buffed auto attacks. They keep pushing in. Everyone get in here was the summary, and that's exactly what's been happening. That is indeed. Makers and it usually signals one thing, and it's aggression, and everything else on this team supplements it, and ADG... Are you seriously going to walk over to Baron? Righteous Glory. I mean, Evelyn's very quick. Whimsy will help. Sivir with the on the hunt. 4-0-1 casually is deft after Mako donated a kill to Vayne earlier in the matchup. Honestly, Korn's performed very, very well. It's going to be one of those situations where Fed Fizz, what's a boy to do against this comp? I mean, Death's going to go back to the top side. Blue will get stolen away. Huey going to try and make something happen, but Mako throws in a stun. That's a good ulti, actually. Clear up. We'll get caught there. Con uh -oh. finds a fish on the baby. Clear up. Little too far forward, maybe, here. Baron does spawn there, but Cola building up rage here. Death, though, 
Too threatening with the Infinity Edge and the Zeal plus Avarice Blade already. And King almost had a good window there. And no teleport used from Maokai either. They're finally going to take this last outer turret to move up to four turrets all in all. They already have an inner turret in the bottom lane. Mason J keeps pushing quite happily. The recalls are on, I imagine, for gold values, but Vayne just trying to try, try and cause as much disruption in mid lane and try and get some turret damage. Nope, not safe. Yeah, Luden's done for Baby. Ninja Tabby there coming through for Clear Love. Deft not quite going back, but probably has enough for at least the static shift now as well. Everyone is picking up some items, and I wasn't kidding when I said Baron before. EDG usually like taking around 25 minutes. I would not be surprised to see them run there. Hard to take Baron without Maokai actually being there to tank it up. And once Maokai exits the map, it's going to be why is the teleport great? Root. That's the big question mark there. Because clear has gone full damage build, the jungler's not really in a position to take Baron as he just eliminates the Raptor. Damage. I mean, he's going to destroy the Baron if he gets on top of it, but you're right. Needs someone to help tank up. Baron does do pretty silly damage, but EDG, you don't, they don't need much to try and take a Baron as they might even go for Huey here, but instead, he's going to clear out some vision and King know it. They're like, we really need to get vision around Baron. I mean, the sneakiest thing that EDG could do is literally to tib as the Baron have that tank, and they have so much damage, they could probably kill it during the duration of the super tanky Tibbis, specifically around level 11, because I believe level on level, you get a thousand extra health on the Tibbers. Very relevant when it's tanking Baron. I I want that so bad now. Is that what you want to see? That's all I want to see. That's, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that one before, but that's all I want now is another tower. It does go down to EDG. They're going to do got plenty of vision here. They actually spotted Corn, I believe, hanging out a little too far in the enemy jungle. Who? So we'll see if they can catch someone out. And even Huey looking toward Corn. He wants to flank this. Absolutely. Korn's looking for any exit kill. He knows red buff spawns, so someone's going to walk up there for the red buff. But EDG, will it be Deft? I mean, Deft is going to face Jake Mako in there as well. Korn, oh, good ward there. Great dodge there. Deft, quite quite dodge it, actually, but the spell shield, I think, ate a good wild growth there from Bami and Korn is going to go down there. Cola hopping in as well. Flash out from Clearly. He's too low. Will go down there. To the Gragas is now Al popped his ult. He's gonna go back in. Cole, a massive flash shot there. Gets onto two. Def turns around. He wants it. He's gonna go in. Does get the kill onto Al. Stays alive somehow. And Mako kiting as best he can with the help of Bami. Tib is also trying to help him out. Mako gets low. Might go down here. Def still chasing in the shields from Bami. Doing so much work. Amazing days poured it in as well. Def flashes out of the boomerang. Gets the fadeaway kill. And an amazing team fight from Edward Gaming. And 4v5 right till the last was that team fight amazing jay even with teleport couldn't get anywhere near the fight finally showed up just to put the cherry on top eg win another fight just again majestic use of the summoners from deft they pile on the gold we're gonna see the replay coming through deft actually spell shields nothing at all the engage almost takes him down but of course wild growth adds all the effective health weaves in and out getting extra health remember Maokai's not involved in this fight at this and present Klilov's point. And dead. And Klilov's already dead. It was actually looking a bit hairy, but they turned back onto Al after a huge Nara ultimate. Watch this trade from Deft. He loses vision, but managed to just get vision at the last. No critical strike coming through from this build. Min is able to live, and finally Maokai slowly lumbers in. It's health bars, but Maker, watch the, watch the path. He's very clever and moving around, just baiting Kola in as much as possible. Even Death has to flash away. He would have died to that boomerang toss. Beautiful, beautiful team fighting it, from EDG. It was just elegant and lovely to behold. Here is 10,000 gold now at EDG ahead. Dragons up in a minute 20, but after that, I don't know what else we can have to top this game, Bubba Smith, because that was a gorgeous team fight. The scary thing is that King haven't even played badly. They've played quite well. They were probably too reckless in their bottom lane choice, but maybe you need to be brazen and try and take it to death rather than just passively losing in this lane. No pick available from Mako in that situation. I'm not a big fan of the no wave clear. If they'd gone for a more standard AD carry, like a Lucian, for example, I think it would have done well. But there's Whimsy. Clue love touching in. Whimsy not enough as Clue love gets ulted out by Huey. Amazing J runs through. Death pops his ulti, but EEG will this time find no kills. Now wasn't actually there. Would have been a 5v4 if they were able to force it. Very good strategic use of the Black Shield. Clear Love's still looking for an engage. He's going to find Sync Dream, but does get spotted out there. Instant Black Shield from Sync Dream is Smart and King just cleaning vision out of their own jungle now. For once, EG's wave's not very well organized. Al's been able to slow push in mid. The bottom wave's actually pushing towards EG's turrets, so that's good for King. They've organized a minion wave push in top. And they're just poking around mid, trying to get some sort of pick around Baron. Yeah, EDG are aggressively forcing a fight here. They want King to come to them because they know they're strong enough to win a team fight. Ow, desperately trying to find farm instead. And the blue buff's going to get stolen away. 
Blue buff stolen away, but still no Titanic advantage to EDG. They have the goal, but they're still trying to be clever about how they force a fight. In and out. Looks like a couple of connection problems, though, and a pause has been engaged. Yep, so we have a bit of time as the brakes go off ever so slightly from what's been a pretty hectic series, honestly. Not even just a game here in the second one. Clear Love looking very focused, as always, there, and in charge of his team and himself. I mean, going for the carry build on Evelyn. Looked good at the start, although does have that propensity to explode if you don't get enough of the members of Agony's Embrace. It adds effective health depending on how many members you hit. I believe at this point, 225 health a member. Looking a lot of aggression. Righteous Glory pops. Amazing. Jay finds Cola, but he's sort of caught out on his own here. Doesn't go in any deeper, though. And with the Dragon back up here, Edigy might just try and force for their third. They really want King to fight them. I mean, third Dragon, 5% more movement speed with a million movement speed augmenters will be very, very relevant. They've started the Dragon. It's on King on whether they want to fight, but they don't have a lot of good team fight uh, initiating options and just have to back away. Yeah, can't really fight that one. Clearly, we'll have a smite back up in about 10 seconds as well. And so King are going to go back to the Baron Dance here. And they can't keep bleeding objectives here. Third Dragon's not too bad to give away, but King, they're starting to run out of options. They, in fact, may have already been be in that situation. It's definitely the closest feeling 10,000 gold lead we've seen in the 2015 season. Looking for the pick on Amazing Jay. That's a lot of good damage. King starting it off nicely. Cola, Rage Buff Evelyn's builds up. Coming the, in. Oh, Death's flanking as well. Clear Love trying to find the target. Ulti is popped. Oh. Three man agonies and Brace. Clear Love destroys that carry. Corn goes down. Cola's in the back line trying to die, but they're kiting wonderfully. And Al can't do anything against the Evelyn as Bami flashes in for a slow. Cola's dead there as well. The last one to fall is Huey. No, Sync Dream, I tell a lie. Still alive, but Four for zero, what a close there by Edward Gaming. Everyone got in there instantly with the Righteous Glory whimsy. Just the W from Evelyn. The burst damage onto Al was disgusting. It prompts the surrender. Feels a little bit early, but honestly, it was going to be another win from EDG. And GG Warplay to this team, the MSI champions, new roster, looking the same level of quality. I mean, they've got the same starting roster, but fielding some very good looking subs here. Amazing J in both games over Koro comes as a surprise, and Bami slotting into the mid lane for Pawn there in game two. And honestly, Teams barely look different from the MSI performance. And Amazing Jay, he's got the crazy, but he can play the standard just fine. Even impressed us with his twisted uh, advanced mechanics. A lot of other Maokai players wouldn't have got that split timing because it's such a short timing window to actually dodge a skill shot in that manner. EDG looking very, very strong. King, again, I think we'll have to reserve judgment. It's crazy that, it, that it, the former Starhawk Royal Club lineup that's another chance in the LPL, and still we don't see the lineup actually cemented as we would expect it, but a bow comes through to EDG. We feel like we could be, should be bowing to them given how great their performance has been recently, but EDG, excellent play. Yep, not letting their foot off the pedal, didn't do it in the spring season, haven't done it through MSI, and it's another great fun game, and still showing at the end of that second game especially, just so good at team fighting. And now Clear Love doesn't even need to get token Evelyn games. Evelyn's back in the meta. He can play it whenever he wants. Well, Clear Love can do whatever he wants. We do, of course, have more games tomorrow, so join us again for more LPL. But we are done for the evening. So for myself, Papa Smithley, Atlas Rusty, and our entire live production crew, we'll see you tomorrow for more Week 1.